Today's episode, guys, we have Jade. So in this episode, we go, we talk about emotional intelligence and we start coming about awareness around emotional intelligence, which is, it's a pretty cool conversation, I reckon. Um, also, too, Jade is a emotional intelligence coach, so make sure you go check her out on all her social medias and all that, which I should link them down below and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's like, it was a really exciting episode. I was yeah, it was a pleasure having her on. And also, too, before I jump into today's episode, guys, if you want to go to the extra length of supporting our, I mean, my podcast, um, support us on patreon.com at forward slash studio of mindfulness. So with this, you will get uh, free access, I mean, access to our Facebook, our Facebook group, or my Facebook group, I should say, a bit all over the joint at the moment. So you will get first access of, um, say, podcasts. We we'll do a live Q and A after each podcast and all that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and at the moment, it's just for a little two dollars. So yeah, I hope you enjoy today's episode too, guys. <laughs> we'll start off that. Sweet, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. That's all right. Um, this go because you just started, or well, you've been doing emotional coach intelligent coaching for a while now so let's go start off with your journey how you got into I guess t- coaching that <laughs> okay um so I remember I remember the day actually but yeah. um like I've always had big plans for my life I always wanted to do big things um, one of my motivating factors was always my family so I was very involved mm. in like looking after my younger siblings um, and then one day I was like I need motivation like I'm gonna I'm gonna find like personal development. So mm. I started that at the age of 16. Um, I then joined. That's so young. Yeah. That's so then, cool though. <laughs> I then joined the army at the mm. age of 18. Um, and that was my test of my personal development, which mm. I greatly failed at. Um, so I had no emotional intelligence <laughs> and I suffered greatly. Mm. And I was literally a victim, um, cried every day. <laughs> And um, it was through through that like two year process mm. that I was actually able to kind of take a step back and be like, okay, like how do I want to be seen? Mm. You know, how am I? I can't control everyone else. I can only control myself. And how am I going to empower myself in that and project that to others instead of expecting them to to act and treat me a certain way? Um, so I learned the hard way. But with that as well, I guess that's why I became so passionate. That's why I wanted to become a coach because mm. I did learn the hard way. So people now don't have to learn the hard way. So yep. I can give them those strategies and give them those tools straight up. Mm. Um, and I think it's amazing. Like I wouldn't change anything about my journey. Mm. Um, maybe the way I dealt with it a little bit earlier <laughs> yeah. on. I wish I learned that a bit quicker, but I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the experience. It's yeah, it's crazy that you say that too, because like you learn, I guess even like starting so young, you learn all the principles and stuff. Mm. But when it actually comes to applying it, it's a whole different ball game 100%. again. And it's like I guess it's the same with what I'm doing. It's like I don't want people to do it the hard way, like I did, or do it all by yourself. Yeah. And do it like hey, instead of doing it in like four years, you can do it in a year, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, we'll jump back on um to victim mentality. I guess how do how do you show someone to change their mindset over being a victim to get ownership? That's such a hard question. I do think I think that's that life experience as well. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your question. I'm gonna divert a little bit, but I yeah, that's all right. No, that's all right. I'll come back. Yeah. To um, for me personally, I love experiencing the experience. So when I feel a certain way, um, that's another thing that like is why I'm so passionate about being a coach because I feel so deeply Mm. and I really give power to the emotion and then I challenge it afterwards. So Mm. I need to experience it first and then I'm able to go in and control it. So I think in terms of victim mentality, unfortunately, in order to overcome that, we actually do have to sit in it and find that pain point. And that that's the experience of life. That is, you know, that's our survival instincts, that's our, our growth, that's our evolution, that's everything in that because if we take that away, we're not human, we're robots. But mm. saying that, you don't want to, as I said, I'm so grateful I went through the experience. It didn't have to take me that long, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it's building this up and it is it is being challenged and it is um, looking at your perspective and being knocked down, but then 
from that, making that switch of empowerment, saying, okay, I can identify that I'm in a victim mentality right now. So I think that's really what people need to need to learn faster is identifying when they're in a victim mentality. So it's more coming aware of what you're thinking in that time. Yeah, definitely. And, um, and how it's affecting you and, and why you're thinking and feeling that way. Mm. Um, that's probably the biggest one, yeah. Yeah, so it's like really just getting down to the core of the, I guess, issue. So just sitting with it, trying to dive deep in it instead of trying to, I guess like one of the parts of being playing the victim roles is like it's just a band-aid to the situation mm. and then it kind of grows and grows underneath yeah underneath the band-aid and then you play more of the victim mentality because yeah. yeah. i know there's things i guess in my life that i still play victim to but i'm aware of it now and it's like once you come aware of it that's when you can start changing yeah definitely mm. definitely or mm. it's the oh, i'll just move on really quickly mm. or i'll just you know oh it's not me i'll just blame it but it's when you take that step and go, wait, it is me. Yeah. Now what can I do? Like that's, that's the powerful bit. Yeah, and that's definitely one of the biggest things, taking ownership of everything. Because once you take the ownership, you realize you can change, you ha you're in the power of changing your life. Mm. And I guess the hardest bit is, is that people want it overnight and it just doesn't happen like that. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And that's the, you know, acknowledgement is the, is the first and the most important step. Mm. Um, you know, because as you said, you can't, you can't progress unless you've actually got control over something and you can't control what you haven't owned, what you haven't fessed up to, what you haven't put your responsibility in. Um, yeah, definitely. 100%. So what you would say, we feel like a lot of your courses and that, what are the main principles you teach with emotional cope, emotional intelligence? Couldn't yeah. even get it out. Okay. <laughs> down the wrong um, way. So I've got like a three-step principle essentially. So mm. as we've already covered, awareness, that then brings choice. And then it's the ownership of the choices we make. So they all kind of work together and, and intertwine because, you know, we, we don't know what we've got. We don't know what our choices are unless we're aware of them. Mm. And we can't own our choices unless we've got choices, if that makes sense. Yeah, so definitely. That's what I focus on. And then with that, I'm all about just bringing that ownership. I really drive that home. It's like, okay, well, this is your life. You know, as I said, you can't control what other people do. What are you going to do about it? Mm. You know, like crap happens in the world. Mm. And that is so awesome. Mm. Like makes us all different. 100%. I think that's the best bit about everything. And it's the way we we deal with that and the way that we work with that that really allows us to form our own identity and to form our new mm. strengths and and our weaknesses but grow as people. Mm. So without that resistance, like we wouldn't have that opportunity. No, and that's like I guess as a human species, you need some kind of resistance that's like suffering to mm. I guess feel fulfilled in your life. And without the kind of you know differences with people you don't really grow as a person because everyone's yeah. the same yeah. and I don't think we would have I guess got here as a society if we're all the same yeah. kind of thing but yeah it's definitely true so um I guess let's go like what type of coaching style would you say you use I'm very reflective yeah so um I don't want to take the lessons out of people Yep. But I will divert their focus on different aspects of their life. So mm. um, I, like I guess, the, yeah, the word to sum that up is just reflective. So someone will give me a problem and I'll just come at it from different angles. A lot of the time what I found with my one-on-one -on -one clients, I love them to bits. It's so great. And I'm sure like, as you know, as well, you know, when we, when we talk to different people, it's not just a one-way learning experience. It's both ways. So I've had so many breakthroughs like with my clients, but also they've taught me so much as well. Mm. Um, so we'd have said problem and it'd be something completely different just because we've targeted it from different angles and really like looked at the root cause. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's reflective and then it's just zoning down in that and really, really getting the most mm. we can out of it. Because as you like, guess you say, like cause some people will say what the problem is, but it actually isn't the problem. The yeah. problem's kind of somewhere else. So they yeah. kind of like use what they're saying. I guess it's not intentional if it's conscious or unconscious, but they try and direct it away mm -hmm. and try and think it's something else, but when it's really this. Yeah, it's all the client. It's all, it's all gotta be on the client. And they don't know the problem straight up. They don't know it consciously, mm -hmm. but that's why being a coach and having that like reflective method of, of working is really important because it allows them to see different perspectives that they wouldn't otherwise be able to see but it's mm. still all them 
Mm. Like I can't, I can't, oh, this is, I can share my experiences mm. and give them maybe some feedback and okay, well, what about this? What about that? But I will never put words in their mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, that's a big thing too. Cause the way I look at when I talk to people about situations, I look at like trying to explain like two problems, like mm. or two ways of looking at it. And that's when they normally start, I guess, start thinking outside the box instead of trying to give them one way, give them a number of ways to think. Yeah, they? definitely. Definitely use examples. Mm. Yeah. And as I said, like, um, you know, they can still learn something from that. Mm. Like sharing, sharing someone's personal experience. It might not be exactly the same scenario, but it's still a great perspective and learnings that come out mm. of that. Because one thing I've really started to think about, especially with emotions and that, is that we have a lot of... I guess a lot of situations that are different, but we experience the same emotions, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like we have two, say you experience this, and I experience that, but we've had the same emotion kind of thing. And then that's, I guess, the best way of connecting, like, hey, I use this way to work out of it. Maybe you try that, or I thought of this way and so forth. Yeah. Mm. That's why I love emotions as well, because mm. they're universal. Mm. And I think the most important thing in society and in communication is relied at, ugh relatability um so yeah you know like we might not always go through the same stuff but mm. we can all resonate with the feelings and and mm. pain and suffering and love and enjoyment and excitement so. yeah because that's definitely something i look at when i talk to people now it's like okay where can we relate mm. try and find something where we can relate on because then you can only expand the relationship or what you're trying to work through with that client at that, that yeah, at that time, <laughs> had a mad start. We're doing great. Yeah, <laughs> had a mad start at it. But yeah, it's definitely true. Yeah. Mm. So what would you say, I guess, when it comes to interpersonal relationships or just problems and not, say the best way to not getting overly emotional about it or not touching emotion to it, okay. what would you say the best way would be to not touch anything? I actually have a strategy that I teach Ooh. in my masterclass, yeah. which I'm happy to share. Um, so basically I use the acronym STOP. So emotions are there for a reason. You know, we are emotional creatures. They come from basically our fight or flight scenario. So when our body feels like it's in danger, when something interrupts our homeostasis, emotions will come up to say, hey, something's going on and I need you to do something about it. So um, suppressing them is never a good idea. Yes, they might come at inconvenient times, and we might not want to feel them and they might not make us feel good, but that doesn't mean we have to invest in the emotion, but we certainly have to acknowledge it when it comes up. So for example, um, I feel something like I'm crossing the street and you know, I don't know, a car cuts me off. Mm. All right, I'll say I'm in a car, otherwise that's a bit dangerous. <laughs> I'm in a car, someone cuts me off, I feel angry, mm. okay? Now I can either let that emotion overcome me and be like, oh, I'm so angry and, and really feed into it, Right? Or I can say, oh, I feel angry. Okay, why do I feel angry? So the acronym STOP is STOP. Just like, okay, acknowledge the emotion is there. Take a breath. So what that means is ground yourself. Really like observe the situation. Always observe the stimulus. So what just happened between, you know, five and ten seconds ago that made me feel this. So, okay, I just got cut, cut off. And then penetrate the emotion. So what's underneath that? And it what that's allowing you to do is not feel the emotion and be in it. It's acknowledging the emotion, but looking into what it's trying to tell you. Mm. So the reason you're angry is like, oh, because someone cut me off. Hey, I could have been in an accident. I find that really rude. That goes against my values. Like it, it's really allowing that. And once you understand that at its core, then you can be like, okay, empowerment, emotional intelligence. What can I do in this situation? Mm. And hey, if you want to get angry, you're most welcome to. Mm. But own that and be in control that you're putting yourself there, not that you're just being overwhelmed by emotion. Yeah, that's 100%. I love that analogy because I did hear that it wasn't, I guess, to do a lot with emotions and that it had something to do. It's like they use the analogy of like someone cutting off and driving. And it goes, when you kind of realize something, you won't kind of realize that everyone, you know, if someone cut you off, the reason why you're overacting because you could have died and so forth. Mm. But then you kind of, instead of getting angry at someone, you probably realize the same thing could happen to them. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. And then you kind of realize you're in the same pattern. Think explain that, right? Yeah. But yeah. There's other, um, 
So that, that one was like my own flavor, but I've mm. heard other ones out there as well where it's kind mm. of like, okay, like put yourself in their shoes, give them reasons as, all right, well, why? So, why did they cut you off? Okay, mm. maybe maybe they're, you know, their wife's in labor. Mm. Like you can put other so things. So be in empathetic there. kind of yeah. things. Like maybe they're having a bad day, which I think that's such a powerful tool. It's just being, I guess, take also, as you're saying before, just take that breath and be like, okay, this yeah. might have happened to them today. Or, you know, you know, I'm in a bad mood because of this today. Maybe the same thing happened to them, but they're reacting yeah, on it exactly. instead of, yeah. Yeah. It's just being in control of the emotion. As I said, you're most welcome to have road rage. I have a lot of road rage. Yeah. And I'm a very happy person. Um, but it's owning that. So it's, okay, I'm choosing to have this emotion, not that I'm just stuck in this emotion and it's overwhelming and, and I don't have any control of, of myself. Mm. Yeah. I think that's 100%. It, and as you're saying, the breath is a massive, powerful tool when it comes to emotions because mm. like it resets everything. Yeah, definitely. Kind of thing. I, well, another thing too, how would you create space for you to listen to your emotions over the thoughts in your head? Okay. Mm. So with that, ah, oh, see, I encourage, I encourage the thoughts in your head. Yeah. I encourage getting to know yourself more and more. So with that, you know, when you have thoughts, positive self-talk is a really good one. Mm. Um, but also understanding stuff. So for example, and for people who are starting off and who, who don't necessarily talk to themselves a lot, um, I really recommend just saying like, okay, well, if you were a friend in this situation, how would you go about that talking to, to your friend? Or, you know, how would you want them to talk to you? So you can literally like self-counsel yourself. Okay, you're feeling angry. All right, why? Okay, that's okay. I hear you. That's all good. Like, do you know what I mean? It sounds yeah. a bit crazy. No, I love that uh, analogy. <laughs> it's something I use like, um, well, to play a little bit with it. It's like I use like the inner child analogy. Like, mm, I've talk, seen your post on that. Yeah. yeah, it's like that's the same thing. It's like I've heard um, Jordan Peterson talk about that too. It's like talk to yourself like you would talk to a friend. Yeah. And it's like, I guess it's like you can use a child, you can use a friend. And it's just being kind to that inner negative voice yeah, exactly. because it does want to be heard and then the other voice does too. Mm. And, and it, Oh, sorry. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's there for a reason. Mm. Um, in NLP, we talk about like the two parts integration. So, you know, you take a positive behavior and a negative behavior and you realize that they both share the same intention. Mm. Um, that was all I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, because um, it also comes down to... Um, I guess it could be suppressing it, which allows it to build up over time and it kind of makes you more reactional too because mm. that side of you hasn't, I guess, been able to express the, express itself. So then I guess you'll notice yourself getting angry at things or things you want to normally get out because that side of yourself actually hasn't had the chance to express itself. Yeah, definitely. Mm, 100%. I'm trying to think, what do you think would be, I guess, best way to just start teaching people how to regulate emotions yeah so again it's asking why the emotions there in the first place mm. but also I think as you touched on it's being kind to yourself and allowing yourself to feel that way so I think in society we've created such such a wall of shame around emotions and around expressing ourselves and telling people what we really want um, and you know and that's just from me like I can only imagine what it would be like for males and I just know that from general knowledge as well and mm. talking to my friends like there's there's such a higher standard of oh no don't suppress like don't don't express yourself you have to suppress um, so I really think it's just like hey it's okay to be human it's mm. okay to feel like as I said everybody feels emotions everyone can relate on that so it's just allowing yourself that space to feel 100%, and to, yeah. to be okay <laughs> with that. And it's not going to feel good sometimes. Mm. No, it doesn't but at all. <laughs> being able to hold yourself in that space as well. So being kind to yourself and allowing yourself to feel that through mm. whatever you're going through. I love that. It's like, it's such a big thing. And it's because we got this, I don't know if it's from, I guess, childhood or where it stems from. Or so we got this thing that we have to feel happy all the time. Yeah. It's like you can't feel angry, you can't feel sad. Mm. And then when you do, you get angry at yourself when you feel yeah. negative emotions. It's like, why am I like this? And it's like, it's okay, it's part of the journey. Mm, definitely. We have, we have this gift of, yeah, feeling an emotion on top of an emotion, on top of an emotion. <laughs> it's like, um, 
there was this really I yeah, love that. yeah my um I had a family friend and he was telling me this we got into a really good DM one day and he's like well you know you wake up and you're like this is such a great day and then something in your in your brain's like oh no what if what if the day isn't great and then you're like oh crap why did I just think that oh you're so stupid oh no now I'm angry at myself and now the day's a mess yep. and like nothing actually changed <laughs> except for the guy's brain <laughs> like and that's what we do so mm. it's it's breaking that cycle and being like I'll feel whatever I want to feel, feel today it's yeah. it's yeah it comes back to the whole like internal world because we I guess because of what's happening internally we think it's reflecting what's happening externally yeah. okay and then we're in this get in this massive negative and positive battle on the inside instead of just I guess accepting and sitting with it yeah exactly which is a big one um, I guess for the final question <laughs> What was the legacy you wanted to create? Oh, for me, it's not about me. Yep. Um, being religious, that's what I want to share. Like, mm. through my life, not through my coaching, but just as me as a person, that's my legacy is to share God. Mm. Um, but in terms of emotional intelligence, I just want, as I said, I don't want people to have to go through all that pain I went through yep. in terms of, you know, the way that we treat ourselves and the shame we put around feeling emotions and feeling out of control. Like we've got limited time to share and to love and to experience life. Mm. And um, what I really want to do and, and give to people is being able to do that like with joy and, and freely and experience the ups and downs, but know that you're still in control and that like you can still like grab life by the walls essentially while going through all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, yeah, that's awesome. That's the best way to explain <laughs> it, I guess. I love that analogy. Yeah. But yeah, thank you heaps for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. That's all right. Cheers for watching today's episode today, guys. I want to give a massive shout out to Conscious Community Brisbane. Make sure you go check out their Facebook page and Instagram page for me. Um, give us a like if you liked today's episode, guys. Uh, tell us what you think in the comments below or send us a me a DM. And if you think a friend will get a lot of value out of this episode, share it with them. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a good one, guys.